Well, hi, and welcome to the Finca del Nino in Spain. I'm here with some of my fellow students and friends and daughter, which is exciting. I'm actually here on a foodie trip with Renee. And in the meantime, I just get to paint and walk around. And as you can see, they have lovely, lovely gardens. So I thought it would be fun just to just to walk around and do some drawings with pen. I love working with a pen. And so I just designed this to be kind of open and free, keeping the spaces different, the sizes different, uh, trying to go from buds all the way to a full bloom. And of course, you always have to have something over lip, overlapping the lip to give it a little more interest. So I did a couple of little practice ones. And I thought it was so much fun working with just random wet and then just throwing the paint on trying to reproduce a lot of the color of the flower into the background and then just keeping it all kind of uh, vignette style, somewhat unfinished. And I did a second one, same thing. This probably still could have a few more darks to develop it, but again, the random wet background, pulling a lot of the color of the flower and the subject into the background and then just sort of suggesting the pot without getting too perfect. So in this beautiful garden, oh, I'm excited about getting started. Well, I never can just make simple outlines. I love to draw where you start a shape, stop, and then continue it. And maybe do a few dots and little, sometimes I color it in just a little bit. Anything to make it kind of unique. And so that's what I've done here. Even in the center of some of these flowers, you can see where I came in and started to fill in with some darks. And in here where I want to create some darks, I literally just came in and created them with my pen. And I, it's not very often that I draw flowers with a pen, but it just seemed like the right thing to do with flowers everywhere. So there's this is no one place, but I did provide you with this drawing if you want to reproduce it and paint along with me. All you have to do is click on it and print it out. So to get started, we're going to put a little water in my fantastic little two-holer here. So we're going to, I picked out a few brushes that I'll need. I've got some salt and a pencil sharpener because I'm planning to add some colored pencils later. And I've also got a little sand, 100 grit sandpaper here. And I even, when nobody was looking, picked a couple of leaves. Where'd my other leaf go? There it is on the ground. I'll pick it up later. But I've got um, a couple of leaves. I'm going to show a little bit of stamping and color sanding. So we're going to start with a random wet. And when I do a random wet, sometimes I go around and then sometimes I just throw a little water. And I like to think of it almost like an abstract painting. Like I would like to have this go up off the top, throw a little more, and come down here sometimes through the shapes sometimes into the negative parts and again throw a little bit and down here again just random sometimes off the page I see I got a little blue down here I'll be able to get rid of most of that later who knows where that came from <laughs> and then for throwing I like to use a round brush so I'm just going to start with the flowers look at that gorgeous color so I'm going to start with some Scarlet Lake and just toss it right in there into some of the flowers. And I always try to get a few nestled in with the, the leaves as well. And I don't mind if it lands on the leaves because it's, it's um, I'm going to add a lot of reds into that eventually. But see, if you paint the flower, you've lost your white. I'm looking to create some of those sparkles. So see, I'm, I'm looking to create some of these little white shapes, and that's why I throw the paint. And then my hope is that it's just going to start rolling out. Of course, this is a color that doesn't roll. You think it's going to, but it doesn't. It's a color that doesn't move in water. So if you want it to move, you got to move it. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to encourage it. Come on. Move around there. So I'll do a little bit of negative painting around some of the flowers. 
Bud. Gotta put one of those in every picture. I just love the buds. And I like to touch all the way off the paper. So you notice I'm going off the paper. Sometimes I lose the edge, other times I leave it crisp. I think it's kind of fun to have a few of each. I, I even want to pull some of this lovely color through the flower itself. And definitely off the edge of the paper. I really think it's important to get a lot of this red dominance through here. So now I'm happy. I can get some, some idea of where the pattern is going. Now I'm going to come in with my quinacridone burnt orange. This is a beautiful earth color. And I want to have the light touching the edge of the lip. So I'm going to go underneath and inside, leaving the light on the edge of the lip. Negative around everything, even here a little bit. Again, I like to throw some of the paint in. Let's get some darker spots of that color. Let's create some of the patterns of movement that you see. I was a potter for 30 years, so I always have to put a little bit of movement into the rings. Love that. We'll just suggest a little bit of that color coming out here. And pull this color right off the bottom. I'm going to leave it hard here, but I'll just let it bleed out up here. How fun is that? Now another tool I have for some lost edges is just my fine mister. And this has the narrow inner, and when I spray it, I get a fine mist. And of course I always have a picture of my fine mister on the front, so to show him off. He's in the other room taking a little nap right now. <laughs> So I'm going to use that. I like to lose the edges, edges in particular, although I like that little last edge. This is a, quite a bit of a hard edge here. I think I'll just allow a little bit more to soften. There. And then the other little trick I love, love, love is salt. And this is simply table salt. Notice I'm not over the top when I do it. And another wonderful trick. <laughs> a tissue when it runs where you don't want it to. See, I lost that white lip. Take care of you. So now if this goes anywhere you don't want, feel free to lift it away. Now I'm going to do a little salt. I'm definitely going to do some salt on the pot and a little bit into my background. And I know it's early to salt, and I'll probably salt again later, but that's what's fun. It, I'm trying to keep this as free as I can. Now I want to use a nice primary yellow. This is a new color I just added called Nickel Azo. And it's a beautiful yellow that uh, it's a little deeper. It's more of an earthy yellow. So I would never think of painting these leaves green. Do you, can you believe that there are people who buy tubes of color? Green tubes of color. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Never, never. Always start with your yellow, which is your highlight. And let's just put it on. We don't care if it runs outside the lines. And then we're going to just throw a little. And one of the things I like about Nickel Azo is it moves in water. So see, if I throw a little around here, it's just going to jump right up. See, it's just going to jump off the page. It's going to give me some fabulous textures. Now the next color I want to use is Quinn Gold. Quinn Gold gives you darker greens. So if I come in with some Quinn Gold, especially in the ones that are underneath the ones on top, so that the leaves behind the leaves can be in Quinn Gold. It's a lovely color. 
It's going to create some depth. It's going to jump back. So anything behind, I'm going to do a little quin gold. Or sticking out into a light area. That would be a nice contrast. Now I'm going to come in with my Antwerp. And Antwerp blue is a color that moves in water. So when I take Antwerp and put it down, I know that Antwerp is going to move. So I can just come around, rest assured it's going to move. And everything's wet pretty much by now. And Antwerp also gives some beautiful darks. I'm not ready for the darks yet, but I'm pushing it back and forth. Light dark. And I always like to get a little bit of that color into the background too, so we'll just throw a little around here. Loosen it up a bit. Whole idea is how loose can we get. Now another color that moves in water, and it's a very dark red, it's called the Lizarin Crimson. So I don't trust it, so I'm going to get out a tissue, if I can get, find one. Oh dear. I like tissue because it's easy. There. Okay, so now with the Lizarin Crimson, again, I'm going to tuck this into some of the deepest, darkest crevices to create some of the very dark reds. My brush is really loaded. I might come back just a bit. So anytime I can find a place behind another flower, I'm going to put a little bit of this beautiful alizarin on it. I do want some reds on my leaves. I've got to be careful. I don't want to lose those beautiful whites. So when you do this, take your time. If they're too if too much is lost, feel free to just lift it away. It dries the paper and gives you more control. And I always like to get some reds into the stems. So alizarin is a great color to get into the stems. Now back to my really bright, this is the brightest color on my palette, Scarlet Lake. And now I'm going to really come in and intensify these colors. And look at that. Oh, look at that. It's perfect. Now the very last thing I do when everything when this is completely dry is I come in and, and add some more of this scarlet lake. Because it's so pretty. But I'm real happy with the little whites. Even no matter how little they are. I'm happy. Now another combination that makes a beautiful dark is quinacridone burnt orange and Antwerp blue mixed together. So it makes a beautiful dark, dark green. Look at that. That's the green I used to paint evergreens. See, if I was home and painting evergreens with snow, that's the color I'd be using. But ha ha, look at where I am. So I'm going to grab, you'll never know. I'm going to grab one more leaf off the tree here, I mean off the bush, the plant. Look at, see, perfect. Oh. So what I want to do now is I want to get some of these beautiful darks in here, the little negative darks, and some of the darks that are, well, I'm painting this mostly positive. I want to get some more darks in here. 
even some darks within the flower. So a little bit on the stems, a few darks here and there where I see them. It's really, really a dark green. It's like two parts and twerp to one part quinacridone burnt orange. And see, this is folded over, so I wanted a little darker here. This is behind, I want this one a little darker. This is behind, a little darker. Anything behind gets a second coat, a little darker. This is sticking out in a light area. That would be nice darker. This would be nice darker. We'll still leave some of the lighter colors. Darken the stem. Now one of the things that's really fun is to take an actual leaf and using a flat brush what you can do is take this really beautiful dark, this Antwerp, and Quinn Burnt Orange. And if I lay this flat, I can just come in here and you can see how it's just picking up the stems. I usually do this on dry paper, but we'll do it on the wet and see what happens. You don't want to do this for every every but it's really fun for just a couple. And I'm gonna put some yellow on it too. And see, I've already put a lot of color on it, so I'm just gonna use this now to stamp some of the veins in there. Let's do another little stamp here. Yeah, nice. Oh, fun. Let me load up again here. Works best on the flat surface. And I'm just picking up the veins. I'm on the back of the leaf. And this is going to be perfect right here. So it's just literally a stamp. Do another little one here. A little yellow at the edge of that leaf. So we've got the veins indicated. How fun is that? Just kind of ran in there. I'm going to lift it out because I want this lighter. Anything folding over is catching the light. This could be a little darker. See, now my paper's starting to dry and I can have more control. Imagine that. <laughs> I want these to be kind of yellowy. These can be dark. There are these, these guys right here. You can see. They're yellow-green with a little hint of red coming out. So as I go around, I'm just going to key up a few things. And boom. I'm going to add some more yellow in this. Then I have my last depth defying act. And that is going to be color sanding a little bit of red watercolor pencil. Over, over these leaves. So you'll notice that the geranium leaf has this little red circle that follows around. So using just a 100 bit sandpaper and a red watercolor pencil, we hope this is watercolor. Ooh, Durant, 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 this is a good one. So I'm just going to do it right in here. So 
um, I just want to be sure that it's wet because you, you want it to land on a wet surface. So I'm just going to color sand in some of this red. Oh, it's beautiful. And we'll just go around. Sorry. <laughs> do some over here too. So a little sanding directly to form that red. Put a little over here. A little over here. <laughs> Roosters. Now one thing that needs a little attention right now, I've been ignoring it, is this pot. So I'm going to come in with some more Quinn Burnt Orange. Bring my brush. And I'm just going to come in and make, make it darker in the shadow areas, lighter where the sun would be touching it. Again, I'm just going to keep it quite soft with lost edges as we get away from our subject. So, found edges here, lost edges here. Maybe just a little darker along this edge. I've got a whole leaf here I haven't even painted. I could just do that. Add some more reds and I think we're really close to done. The one thing I really insist though is that you bring a lot of that red into your leaves and that little color sanding helps. And then later you can come in and glaze over the top. So for example on a piece like this you I can just take some of this red and simply glaze right over the dry top and just soften it and do a nice little lost thin glaze like that. And then the other thing I can do is just simply come in and key these reds. When the paper's dry, I'm in control. Ooh, and I can just pop some really nice bright colors. I'm not gonna lose those whites. I'm gonna sneak them around don't lose your whites. Maybe put a few red on some of the stems. Maybe put some more red in the pot. So there you go. The final check, some of my edges. I see I've managed to smudge up a few here. Maybe I could lift a few right now. Otherwise I can clean those up later. <laughs> got, got them all over. Whenever you color sand, you want to do a little bit of color over the top. So, there you go. Well, hello everybody. I'm really excited today to show you a, a lesson I've been thinking about and attempting over the years without success, but now I think I've got it figured out. So I'm gonna share with you a lesson I call spontaneous flowers. They happen quickly and it's really fun. It's wet into wet and I can't wait to show you. But before I do that, I just wanted to back up a little bit and show you some of the lessons I've done in the, in the past where you, um, I'm going to be working with just the positive subject, not worried about negative painting in this lesson. That's why I'm excited about it. No negative painting. It just happens. But you can see here how tight this is. Almost a botanical style. Audubon, that kind of thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to have colors moving all over. But there's one important thing that we can learn by looking at this. And that is whenever you have a, a, floor, a flower, if it's red, you need to put that red into the foliage, into the stems. It's really important to get a continuity. 
So I thought, well, I'm gonna share this just so you can see how important it is, even in this very tight looking subject. Here's another example. And I remember the excitement the day I <laughs> picked some of the leaves outside. This was, of course, in the summer when the geraniums were growing. And I just inked up the geranium and used it like a stamp. And you can see how really nice they look. And again, you can see how the color has to go into the leaves and the stems, but it's all tight. Mm, we're going to do something about that. Okay, here is another example of where I just took the pen in this case. Those others were done with pencil, but there's just something magical about working with a pen. I use the Mars Stadler graphic pen, and here's an example of it. It's a German-made ink, excellent quality. And I just love it because I can come in and do all kinds of detail and just uh, overlap shapes do some focal areas, leave some rest areas, and I can just keep adding and adding. Notice how my stems are not straight and military looking. They're almost all bending a little bit. And it's, it's important, bending into the picture, bending into the picture. And then the overlapping is really important. Now, I was starting in this one to feel a little desperate. Oh man, I need to get something sparkly in here. <laughs> you know what did it? salt just a little bit of salt in with my um, foliage there and of course another subject yet yeah, these are poppies really i love poppies can't beat them now here's an example of what i'm going to be teaching today and you can see it's all very positive there's no negative painting in here but what happens when i show you how i did this with this random wet backing and then literally throwing the paint, what happens is you end up getting these beautiful little white speckles within your focal area, some whites within your um, stems and leaves, and the color, when you throw it in, moves into those wet areas in the background, forming what I really like, which is this lost and found. Some of the edges are hard, some of the edges are lost, and I just love this look. It looks very free, very spontaneous. And, and that's exactly what it is. This was so much fun to paint, I can't tell you. <laughs> Here's another one I painted. And both of these were just recently painted in Spain. I was over there in this beautiful garden. Uh, this one happens to be roses. And it's the same approach. Now, I haven't had time to finish this. This one still needs a few more darks and a few more brighter colors to, to give it that final touch. So on this one you're still looking at the underpainting. So this is the painting you watched me paint at La Finca del Nino, a beautiful, beautiful area over in southern Spain. The gardens were right next to me and all these geraniums were just abounding. And so it, it couldn't have been more fun just to start throwing this paint around. And see, one of the things I was trying to accomplish was to have these beautiful little white shapes within the focal area. So you'll notice there's whites within those. And I accomplished that by kind of wetting around those so that the color would run into the background but not completely fill in the flower itself. And then I just threw pure yellow, pure gold, pure Ant Antwerp blue, some pure Quinburnt orange. And now all it needs is a few touches to bring it back to some crisp edges, some darker darks, and some brighter light colors. So let's start with some darker darks. One of my combinations that I love is a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange and a lot of Antwerp blue. So it's kind of a two to one mixture. And you can see I get a beautiful dark, dark green. Absolutely beautiful. So with a tissue handy and a little bit of this color on my brush, one of the first things I wanna do is come in here and just pop in some really strong, beautiful darks. Not solid necessarily, but just to pop them in. Some of the stems need to be darker. 
perfect. So we'll just come through here and dark, deepen some of the stems. As I look around, it's fairly obvious which ones need to be a little bit deeper. Ooh, I like it better already. Now if it looks like too much, that's what the tissue's for. Just come in and give it a little dab. Ooh, I like it better already. Now another area, this is all kind of similar. I like what's happening, but at the same time, I would love to identify the edge here as a darker color, and especially here where the leaf is turning. If we come in here, and show this darker underneath, maybe a few lines leading into the center here, and maybe a little darker here. And then of course I just wet my brush, take off a little bit of that extra, and just soften some of these areas. So they just kind of melt into the rest of the picture. Oh, that felt good. Now anytime I have a leaf behind a leaf, this is saying it needs to be darker. So here's another beautiful area that we can pop out a little bit more dark, but not lose it all. I love to see, I love that corner. I don't want it to be lost. And I think we're going to move in a little closer here so you can see a little better some of the changes that I'm making. So you can see here where I went a little darker. Here I just made it a little darker. Now here's another petal behind a petal. So again, let's come in here and pop that one a little darker. Maybe put in a few interesting little shapes. Let's wash out the brush, take off the extra moisture, and then just soften. So I love to have edges that are in control and edges that are softened. See already we're starting to get some nice back and forth. Over here too we can look to make a few darker shapes to pop out. Over here maybe a little darker. Uh, over here definitely. Let's pull that a little bit darker. Now another combination I like to use is Quin Gold combined with Antwerp. And see that gives us more of this olive -y look. Isn't that pretty? So this would be for very dark. This would be more for a mid-tone. So now looking again, let's come in here with this kind of olive-y mid-tone and few more darks leading into the flower itself. Oops, I was off there for a minute. There. So a few of these little darker stems coming down. So now moving back into this focal area, between these two, I'm going to start going darker on the ones behind and very dark on some of these that are coming out and touching those beautiful white edges. And of course, in most cases, the stems are going to have to go just a little bit darker. And whenever you're feeling concerned, always shake out your brush and soften those edges. Now here you can see where I took and stamped it. That turned out pretty good. And then if I want to, I could simulate some, of the, some more of that stamping. That was fun. Now we're almost done adding most of the darks that we need. Now we could have a little fun just brightening it up. So if I were to come in with just some pure yellow, this is my new color, Nickel Azo. Just a beautiful, beautiful, bright yellow. 
in my underpainting, I literally threw it on. But now I'm doing more of a direct paint just to key it up. This is also Windsor yellow, a very, very bright yellow. And every now and then I like, it's pretty hard to get yellows back, but you can try. <laughs> now the other thing I wanna do is key up some of the reds. So let's move up here. And I'm going to use my brightest color on my palette. I'll sneak it in here. This is Scarlet Lake. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It's a bright, bright orange. And so if I come in here and just throw in carefully now, because I threw it before, now I'm going to carefully approach and get a few of these nice, clean, bright edges. Ooh, doesn't that look nice? How about over here? Let's get some of those nice bright colors in there. Love it. What a difference. Move over here. Pop in a few of these nice bright, bright colors. And even if I want to, I can throw a few bright colors into some of my petals, leaves. Now I'm going to focus on this one. I love the way this looks with those whites. I'm not going to repaint the whites, but see some of these edges that are going right against that flat background, what a perfect spot to kind of fill it in, almost like a coloring book. See, all those years of coloring are going to pay off. So on some of these edges, I'm just going to clean them up. Not all of them, just a few. With the brightest color I have. Down here, again, just some of the edges. But I'm going to save those beautiful whites. Don't you dare fill in those beautiful whites. <laughs> and over here, just a few. And then over here, now this one did get kind of wet, but it's okay. We're going to key it up a little bit more, put in some of these bright colors, save the whites. A few down here. Now the last thing I want to do is come in with very dark colors. So alizarin crimson, down here, alizarin crimson is the darkest red on my palette. And see if you compare it to the, <laughs> if you compare it to Scarlet Lake, you can see the values. And so you have to buy a lot of reds. You can't make a red darker or lighter. In transparent watercolor, you have to have a variety. So Scarlet Lake is my brightest, and Alizarin Crimson is my darkest. So now I'm going to come in, and I'm just going to add a few extra darks. Where are they going to go? That's pretty easy. They're going to go into the centers. If there's a color behind, a petal behind, it goes behind. So we're just going to do it. You can soften them with your finger, touch them with your brush, a damp brush. But I'm basically pulling these into the deepest crevices. Here you can see we need to have just a few deep, deep, deep colors going into the crevices here. And that little bit, it's amazing how that little bit just seems to pull it together. Don't lose those whites now. You'll notice I'm just dancing around them. Don't want to change that. But whenever I have behind, I go with that. So a little bit more alizarin crimson, and we should be pretty close to done. If you didn't get enough red on some of your stems, you can go over it 
with any of these reds. It really, it just makes such a difference. Over here we need a few more really strong darks. Definitely on this one. In fact, I think what I'll do is make these outer edges here all darker. Seeing as I didn't, by accident, I didn't save any white, so we're just going to make them darker. That makes sense to me. But we're going to save the whites we do have. Okay. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. So now I'm going to pull it out again so you can see the whole thing. I'm now going to make a final decision. And what I need to do is to make this pot just a little bit brighter. I used quinacridone burnt orange. And that's just a beautiful, pure, pure color. I love it. This was all done wet. You can see I threw a little salt in it. So now if I just come in with some of this pure quinacridone burnt orange, that's going to also bump this up a bit. And see, there's some texture on the pot here. The pot actually has some throwing rings. I could do a little bit of dry brush. And I was thinking if I just came in a little bit darker from this side, that would be nice. Nice little finish. Now I'm going to wet my brush again, control the amount of water. So I basically want the pot darker on the edges with the light coming through the center. Soften it out as I get to the edges. And then I think I need to go just a little bit darker, just a little bit darker within the dirt here. So if I take my Quinn Burnt Orange, just put a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue in it. That'll make it darker to a dark brown. And I'm just going to come in and darken some of the dirt here. Oh, that feels good. When in doubt, just dab it with your tissue. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of this dark color could be added here under the rim. Just to emphasize that a bit. Maybe some of these textures here could have a little additional dark added. A little throwing ring here and there. Maybe a little darker over here coming in. Wet, soften. And we are done. Well, here we have the finished painting. And I put just a working mat on it to show it off a little bit. I'm actually very pleased with the, uh, the whole overall loose, spontaneous, free-spirited look I was looking for. And it's really kind of fun when you frame these up to look into maybe a toned mat. There's so, so many ways you could present it. But I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It was sure fun for me to teach it. Thank you. So you're going to, you oh, this is on, okay. Can you, that's not on because I can't see myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Free-spirited style of painting. I love it myself. Do we need to do it again? No, I think that's good. <laughs> you're kidding. Now here, here's another example, uh, and this one was kind of fun. I remember the day I painted this, I actually picked one of my uh, 
start over.